In this video, we're going to be going over the basics of call option and put option payoff diagrams. I know it seems a little complicated at first, but stick with me. It's actually very simple and you're going to understand it very quickly. A call option is a financial contract giving the holder the right, but not the obligation to buy a stock by a certain date. And so it's called an option because we have the option to buy the stock. We're not obligated, but we have the right to exercise that option if we choose so and if the conditions make sense to do that. So there's two different sides that we can be on in an option contract. The first one would be long. And so if we were long, we could pay a premium to be long, which means we're the ones that own the contract. Or we could be short, which means that we received a premium to be short. So we are now obligated to potentially pay the person who bought the contract from us a certain amount if they exercise the option. Now let's just get into some examples and it'll make more sense. Let's draw the profit and loss diagram for a call option in which we are long. So we own this call option. Let's read the example real quick. An investor purchases a long call option contract on company XYZ with a strike price of $100. So the strike price is the amount that we're able to buy this stock at. So $100. So that's why I put X exercise price equals 100. The premium for the option is $10. So we paid a $10 premium to purchase this option in the first place. Assuming the investor holds the option until expiration, create a profit and loss diagram showing the potential profits or losses at various stock prices for company XYZ at the time of expiration. So there's just a few things we're going to want to go through quick. So one is this variable C. So C equals the value of the call option. And C is going to be equal to the maximum of either the stock's price, so just think of S as this underlying stock's price, minus X, so X is the amount that we're able to sell the stock for, so 100, or zero. So this value of C can never be less than zero. All right, so the profit is going to be equal to the value of that call option C, minus the original premium that we paid of $10. Got it? <laughs> Good. So now we'll go down to our profit and loss diagram. So on this axis here, this vertical axis, we can see our profit and losses. So if we're above this zero mark, that means we've made a profit on this contract. Whereas if we're below this zero mark, that means we have made a loss or lost money on this contract. Now let's start drawing our diagram. So initially we pay $10 for this option contract. So we know that if the stock price of the stock was below $100, we can't really exercise this option contract. The only time that it makes sense to exercise this contract is when we can buy that price, the, buy the stock for less than it's actually worth. And the only time that the, we could buy the stock for less than it's actually worth is if the price is over $100. So any point in time where the price is below 100 or equal to 100, we have essentially just lost $10. We've lost the $10 premium that we initially paid. But once we start getting past $10 or that $100 mark, we start to recoup some of our losses. And so let's just draw a line right here. So we're going to 110. And 110 is our break even point. And why is that? Because if the underlying stock price S is equal to 110 and X is equal to 100, then this value becomes 110 minus 100, which means that the call option's value is $10. And then if we want to calculate our profit, then we take our $10, that is the value of our call option, and subtract the $10 premium we paid, and our profit is equal to zero. So that's why when we hit 110 on this timeline, we are exactly equal to zero profits and losses. However, if the price of this underlying stock continues to rise, we'll see that we're actually going to start making more money. I'm going to try to draw as straight of a line as possible. 
cut me some slack it's not that easy so let's just let's draw a line like that so then once we get let's say to 120 as an example so let's say we're at 120 so we hit 120 and that means that the price of this underlying stock is equal to 120 dollars i can buy a stock that's worth 120 dollars for only a hundred dollars so I'm really up 20 bucks on the value of my call option at this point in time. However, that 20 bucks is going to be subtracted by the 10 I initially paid, that premium to come up with my profit of $10. And then you can see as we keep going up, once we get to 130, we're up 30 bucks on the value of our call option, but we paid 10 bucks. So really we're only going to be profiting uh, $20 at that point in time. And so we can just keep continuing this line out into the future. And as long as the stock price keeps going up, we keep making more money as the owner of the call option. Now let's draw a payoff diagram for the opposite side of that call option. This is going to be for the investor that sells a short call option contract, right? And we're just going to do the same thing. But for this short call option, um, the strike price again is going to be 100 and the premium that was received for the investor that sold the call was $10. Again, so X is still 100, premium is still 100. The value of the call option is still equal to the maximum of the underlying stock price minus the $100 exercise value or zero. So the call still cannot be below $0, but this time the profit to the short side of that contract is the premium minus the value of the call. This is the reverse of what we saw on the long side of the call, which was the profit was the value of the call minus the premium. So basically whatever one side of the contract loses, the other side gains. And this is gonna be quite simple now that you know how the long call works. So if I'm selling this call, I'm up 10 bucks. Unless the stock price goes past $100, I am up I am up $10. I've gained $10 because I sold this call option for $10. However, once the price of that stock starts going past 100, I've got the same break even point as the other person because if this is 110, if the underlying price of the stock is 110, then the value of this call option is 110 minus 100, so 10 bucks, and then my profit is equal to 10 minus 10 which is $0. So it's the same break even price. However, if the price keeps going down, it's going to go like this. So once we get up to say 120, now we have lost $10. And the reason that 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 we've lost $10 is because the value of the call here is going to be 20 bucks. So our profit is 20 or 10 minus 20. And so we've lost $10. And so on the long side of the call, where we had this unlimited upside, on the long side, it looks something like this, if you remember correctly. And if the price of the stock kept going up, we could just keep making more and more and more money. So we had unlimited upside. However, when we sell the call, all the best we can do is gain 10 bucks, but we have an infinite ability to lose money because the price of the stock could keep going up and our losses could just continuously get larger and larger. Put options are very similar to call options. They're just the opposite. A put option is a financial contract giving the holder the right, but not the obligation. So again, it's an option. We're not obligated to sell a stock by a certain date. Now, every single word in this definition is exactly the same as the call option, except for this one, sell. So the call option was the right to buy a stock by a certain date. Put option is the right to sell by a certain date. So if I own a call option, I want the price to go up of the underlying stock. Whereas if I own a put option, if I'm long a put option, I want the price of that underlying stock to decline. Right, and it's the same down here. So we can pay a premium to be long the put option, so we own the put option, or we can receive a premium to be short the put option. 
So that's where we're selling the put option. Now let's look at how we might do a payoff diagram for an investor that is long a put option. So this investor buys a long put option contract and it has a strike price of $100. So this is just like the call option examples we did. X equals 100. The premium for the option is 10 bucks. So that's the same as well. Premium's 10 bucks. And so now we have this new variable, P. P is equal to the value of the put option. And P is equal to the maximum of either zero or the strike price X minus S. So this is very similar to the value of a call option, but in the call option, it was S minus X. So it was the value of the stock's price minus exercise price. For the call option but for the put option the put option actually becomes more valuable if the price of the stock decreases so if you can see if s goes down then the difference of x minus s will increase in a positive direction so the profit to the person who is long a put option is going to be equal to the value of the put option minus the premium that they initially paid to take ownership of that option so let's go ahead and draw this payoff diagram so if i bought this contract for 10 bucks i'm going to be down i'm going to be down 10 bucks so if this price is anywhere a hundred bucks or less i'm going to be down 10 bucks that i paid because i cannot exercise it now once it gets to 100 bucks my line starts ticking up like that and then I hit my break even point of 90 and I'm just going to draw this out. That should be a straight line. I just screwed it up. But anyways, let's walk through it. So if we get to 100, then the value of this put option is equal to 100 minus 100. And then the profit is just going to be equal to zero because that 100 minus 100 is zero minus the 10 bucks we paid. So we're still down 10 bucks. However, once we get to 90, our break-even point, that means that we can sell this for $100, so what's actually worth $90. So we've sold something for $10 more than it's worth. So that's why this put options value is 10 bucks now. And we have the profit of 10 minus the original $10 premium that we paid up here. And that gives us a, a value of zero. So that is our break-even point right here. But then let's say once we get to 80 bucks, once we get to 80 bucks, we should be up $10. And that is because we're selling something for $100 that's really only worth $80. So this put option is worth 20 bucks and our profit is equal to 20 bucks minus the initial 10 that we had paid for premium, which gives us a $10 profit. And we can see with this long put option contract, the worst we can ever do is lose our original $10 right here. This is our $10 loss. But the best we could ever do is equal to the basically the exercise price minus the premium that we paid. So if this stock's price went all the way down to zero, I can sell a stock for $100 that's worth nothing. So that put option would be worth $100. Bucks, but then I'd lose my $10 premium in my profit calculation and I'd be up $90 bucks total. What if the investor in question is actually short a put option? So this investor sells a put op a short put option contract for a strike price of 100 bucks and a premium of 10. So all this stuff is the same up here. And then now we have this put option, the value of the put option, which is the same as when the investor was long the put option. That's just going to be equal to the maximum of the exercise price minus the strike price or zero the difference here though is just like when we were talking about the calls this is swapped around so now that we're short the put option we actually profit if the premium is higher than the value of the put option whereas on the long side they profited if the put options value was higher than the premium now let's draw this payoff diagram so when i sell this put option i'm up 10 bucks. I've made $10 and I will continue to have made 10 bucks until this goes past 100. And then now I have the same break even point as the last time, which is $90. And so 
I'll walk through it one more time. The reason this is 90 is because I've made my $10 premium right here, right? My premium's 10. Now, the person I've sold this to is going to have a value of 90, or sorry, 100 here minus 90. So that's worth 10 bucks. So this put option here is worth 10 bucks. So that's 10 minus 10, and that becomes a profit of zero. And so that $90 is the break even point. And then once we get to 80 bucks, now I've lost $10 because their value right here is 100 minus 80, which is 20. So I'm at 10 minus 20. So I'm down $10 there. And I can lose all the way up to 90 bucks if this stock's price goes to zero. 